through a phase of making taxidermy um, for maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, and I made, I made several pieces, uh, quite a, f a few of which were, were animals without heads. I think there's something very perverse about taxidermy. It's a representation of life that somehow doesn't really look very lifelike, but then is somewhere in between a representation and a, a relic of a, of a living creature. There's something odd about taxidermy and something creepy that I think most people understand. Um, and I quite enjoy that, that sort of oddness. There's a certain comedy to it, but then there's also a, a, perhaps a bit of tragedy to it or something quite dark that I quite like. This is a piece that I made in 2010, and it's 10 pairs of outsized ceramic boots. Uh, they're glazed and shiny on the outside, kind of rough, unglazed clay on the inside. And of work, they sort of reference um, my drawings, maybe, in a way, because they're quite uh, sort of graphic and simplistic. They look like, um, I don't know, maybe the boots of cartoon characters or something. I've shown them in various different ways over the years. Um, I think originally I showed them on a very low plinth, which sort of made reference to a shoe shop. Um, and then subsequently I've shown them on pedestals like this, and I've shown them on a kind of stair type big pedestal as well. Um, so I don't know, they, they sometimes appear as museum artifacts, or sometimes as things that you might want to buy. I like the fact that it sort of sits somewhere in between f fine art and, and craft. Like ceramicists are not really seen as artists, which is, doesn't really seem fair, but that's just the way it is. and it's, um, it consists of about 300 drawings that are all made by 300 different artists. Um, there's a, an empty pedestal in the middle of the room, which is the, the name of the, I guess that was the spectre, and I invited 300 or so people to make a drawing of that sculptural piece that I made, and then I destroyed the sculpture. So the only record of it are these drawings. Um, so I guess I was, I was interested in um, drawing being serving a real purpose of, of documenting something. What I wanted was for people to make um, objective drawings of the sculpture, but in reality, people, some people did that, but a lot of people made uh, kind of text interventions um, and just annoyingly random <laughs> drawings that didn't seem to bear any resemblance to, the, to what they were supposed to be recording. So, uh, but I accepted that because that's part of the project. If you want. You know, if I'd wanted to just have an objective drawing record of it, I guess I could have done that myself. So, but this is 300 different representations of it. So I, I guess I just have to accept what I got. And, and um, some of them I like, some of them I like less, I suppose. And 
This is a work called Beginning, Middle and End and it's made of two tons of unfired clay made into one continuous sausage that's approximately 400 meters long in a big pile. Maybe it's a metaphor for life. This is a very short beginning, very short end and a huge middle bit where lots of stuff seems to be happening. Daddy, where did I come from? You came from your mummy. Apparently, there are 413 components in this work, although I never counted them. It was a work that, I, that was initially made, I initially made in a much smaller state. There are far fewer objects. And I made it in a space where it wasn't very well regulated and I couldn't really um, be confident that the work would be looked after and that people wouldn't steal bits of it. So I made this work out of junk and it's, in a way it's sort of like a big drawing um, and it's expanded over a, a number of times that I showed it and I added more components to it and it became ever more complicated. Um, and eventually it acquired this big planet-like thing that hovers over all these things. It's called insects, and most of the objects are insects. Some of them are hands, and some of them are just sort of forms or letters or whatever. And there's something going on with everything. There's an interaction between all the objects, all the insects. As an individual work, it has many, many components and it's quite complicated. Uh, and it has, it's, I don't know, it's like some world, some interior of some place that I've created which has all the elements of a, a, an environment. It has its own solar system and fauna and fundra um, and its own kind of dramas. The kids seem to like it you know, because there's lots of things to look at and ponder. So this is a, a work that I made um, from other works. It, it's a, a set of inkjet prints that are from the archive of my graphic work. Um, in this instance, they're all the same format. They're all A3, black and white. Uh, it's just a way to show a lot of drawing um, in a very practical way uh, for, for a touring exhibition. You can see my work en masse. The drawing work kind of works better with much where you can see a lot of it. And sometimes it's, there's quite a complicated relationship between the text and the image. It's fairly obvious what the metaphor is. He's the artist. There's some some 
unconscious thing that's going on. It, you know, often when I'm talking about my drawing, I'm sort of thinking about automatic drawing, like the surrealists, about the, the, the mind, the conscious mind and the act of drawing being in some way separated, or there being some slippage between the two. And in a way, I guess this is sort of a, con, you know, uh, maybe an ironic take on that, where the, the hand isn't present, it's just the, just the head, just the brain, coming straight out of the brain, and the, the pens are held by the, up the nose. <laughs>